Hi guys, lesson 3.3 .3 on the factor theorem is next. The factor theorem states that if f of a is zero for a polynomial, then x minus a is a factor of the polynomial. We worked with this last lesson when we started learning synthetic division. If you do synthetic division and you get a remainder of zero, which is exactly what this is saying, then the factor that you started with, and remember we did switch the signs to go from factor to root, is in fact a factor of the polynomial, or the root is an x-intercept of the polynomial. Now, there's something that's called the integral zero property, And essentially what that says is you're going to take your constant term and you're going to try factors of the constant to see if they factor this, to see if they give you a remainder of zero. So for the number two, what are all the ways that we can multiply to two? One times two and negative one times negative two. Those are all the numbers that you could try in synthetic division to see if you get a remainder of zero. Now, that's a lot of synthetic division to try. You might have to try four different times before you find a remainder of zero. So a shortcut to this is to go ahead and graph this in your calculator and look at where it crosses the x axis. I'm just gonna start by trying the root the potential root of x equals 1 and see if I get a remainder of 0. So 1, synthetic division needs to have x cubed, squared, x constant, good, I don't need to put 0 placeholders in. I'm going to put the coefficients which happen to be positive 1, negative 1, negative 5, and 2. I'm going to pull down my 1, I'm going to multiply, and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. This last number is my remainder. Since the remainder is not equal to 0, that means x minus 1, the number that I tried as a factor, it's not a factor of this. So the integral zero property would tell us to try another one. Try x equals two. Set it up the exact same way. Do your synthetic division. Get a remainder that's not equal to zero and therefore x minus two is not a factor. I'll do it one more time with negative 2. And see if I can get this to work. Multiply, add, multiply, add a remainder of zero. Therefore, what I tried for my root negative two as a factor would be x plus two. And this is a factor. So if I were to graph this in my graphing calculator, I would see an x-intercept, aka root, aka zero, at the value x equals negative two. What does this mean if I write out the actual polynomial? Well, x cubed minus x squared minus 5x plus 2, that's what I just factored. I found that x plus 2 is a factor, and that this part here, which is just kind of in code for what our answer is, is going to be the other factor. So our original had x cubed as the first term, so this one here corresponds to x squared and then x, and then constant. So in here I have x squared minus 3x plus 1. Now you could continue on with this question and tell me the other roots. This is going to have three roots in total. Negative 2 is a root, 
And this quadratic also gives me two roots. Bonus marks if you can figure out how I would find the roots. It's not factorable. I can't find what multiplies to 1 and adds to negative 3. So my only other option here, if I'm trying to do this algebraically, is everybody's favorite, the dreaded quadratic formula. So I could put my values of 1, negative 3, and 1 into my quadratic formula, and I could simplify it, and I could get my other two roots. Lucky for you, we're going to skip by that since we're emergency remote learning during this pandemic, but that is absolutely fair game. We've been studying the quadratic formula since grade 11, so it's something you should know how to apply. Let's try p of x now. So if we were really doing this algebraically, we would try all the numbers that are factors of 4. And there happen to be a lot. You can do 1 times 4, 2 times 2, and the negatives for both of those as well. So you could be trying a lot of synthetic divisions until you found one that works. A little bit of calculator work and looking at where an x-intercept is lying might make this a shorter process for you. I'm going to try x equals to 1 because I've put this in my calculator and I think that that's where an x-intercept is. So synthetic division now, put your 1, put your coefficients, making sure that you've got your x's in descending order, cubed, squared, x, constant. Pull down your first term, multiply this way, write your answer, and add vertically. Remultiply, add vertically. Multiply, add vertically. The last term is your remainder. So I picked a good one to start with because I found that x equals 1 is indeed one of the roots, which means x minus 1 is one of the factors. I'm going to write what p of x is in factored form here. My second bracket is this stuff here. We started with a cubic, which means the first term here is squared. This is 1x squared plus 0x, I don't need to write that, minus 4. Now this flashes us back to grade 10. We can factor x cubed minus 4 pretty easily if we remember a method called difference of squares. This p of x function is going to be equal to these three factors. So all I did to get x squared minus 4 factored is I square rooted the x and put that first, square rooted the 4 and put that second. This is difference of squares. So actually I know in this one if these are my factors, that would mean that my x-intercepts or my roots are at 1 negative 2, and positive 2. So I've got some kind of cubic function here that's going through negative 2, positive 1, and positive 2. So it might look something like that. Let's try another. P of x is 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 3. None of the terms are missing. For the number 3, we could try 1 times 3 and negative 1 times negative 3. A little bit of calculator work, and I've decided that I'm going to try a root of 3. Setting up my synthetic division with the coefficients 2, negative 5, negative 4, and 3. Multiply 2 times 3. Add 6 plus negative 5. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. And negative 3 plus 3 is a remainder of 0. 
Therefore, x equals 3 is a root. So I've just got p of x partially factored to have x minus 3, remember to switch the sign. And then this bottom part here corresponds to 2x squared plus x minus 1. Now you can continue with that 2x squared plus x minus 1, and you can factor it using synthetic division again if you'd like. Students generally like synthetic division, but I take this opportunity to remind you of how you know how to factor this already. In my classes, I use a diamond, but you don't have to organize your work that way. The diamond just helps us decide what number we're going to multiply to and what number we're going to add to. We're multiplying to 2 times negative 1. We're adding to the middle term here. What two numbers multiply to negative 2 and add to positive 1? That would be 2 and negative 1. If the coefficient here wasn't a 2 and it was a 1, those would be our factors. We would just put them in brackets with x. But we have to do the method called decomposition when our first number is not a 1. What decomposition looks like is the first term and the last term staying the same, and the middle term decomposing into the two magic numbers that we just found with x's. I cut it in half and GCF both sides of that line. These two terms both divide by 2x. I'm going to take out a GCF of 2x. My 2's cancel and my x's subtract the exponents to get 1. My 2's cancel, my x's cancel, but be careful when everything cancels you end up with the number 1. I'm going to GCF the, left, the right side now, and I'm going to take out a negative if the first term is negative, which it is. So I'm going to GCF out a negative 1, and I get x plus 1. Decomposition tells you you're doing it right because these two brackets, if they end up being the same, you've pretty much done everything right. You just need to write your final answer as one of those brackets and the GCFs, 2x minus 1. So this quadratic that we had factored into these two brackets, I'm going to pull down my original factor that I found using synthetic division, and this is telling me that p of x in factored form is equal to x minus 3, x plus 1, and 2x minus 1. This is how you factor things that have higher degrees than 2. What does this also tell me? This tells me that my roots are positive 3, negative 1. And for this one over here, if I set it equal to 0 and do my algebra, I get a root of 1 half. Let's try one more. First, checking your polynomial to make sure that every place is included. x to the 4, x to the 3, x squared, x to the 1, and a constant. We're good. We don't have to add zeros. I've checked on my calculator, and I'm going to try the root negative 2. I'm going to pull down the 1, multiply 1 times negative 2, put my answer here, and add it to negative 5. I'll keep going in that same fashion. A remainder of 0 is what I got, so this is a factor. I now have p of x factored to have x plus 2, switching the sign, and down here, here are my coefficients. My original had x to the 4, so my first term here is 1x cubed minus 7x squared plus 16x minus 12.
Now what I'm going to do is synthetic division all over again, but with my cubic here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my calculator so that I can get an idea of what x value to try for it. And I'm suggesting that we try the value of 2. I highly recommend you pause the video, put it in your calculator, and see if you can find out why I chose 2. I'm going to do synthetic division again. Get a remainder of 0. That's awesome. My polynomial P of x now has broken down to have another factor, this time x minus 2. And this one was cubic, so this answer here is squared minus x plus constant. Now you can do synthetic division one more time if you wish, but it's much faster to know how to factor from grade 10. This is a quadratic. The leading coefficient is a 1, so we simply have to find the numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5. They're nice numbers. They're negative 2 and negative 3. And when the leading coefficient is a 1, that breaks down to be those numbers in brackets with x. Don't forget to pull down your previous factors that you found through synthetic division. And you now have p of x in fully factored form. To use the terminology properly, x plus 2, x minus 2, and x minus 3 are the factors, and the roots, or the x-intercepts, are going to be the opposite sign. So we do have positive and negative 2, and we have a positive 3. So this is going to be a polynomial that goes through the x-axis at plus or minus 2 and positive 3. The last thing I'd like you to take a look at is an equivalent form of p of x and see if you can decide why that is exactly the same as the last p of x that we wrote. See how the x minus 2 is squared? Remember that squared corresponds to repeated multiplication. So this squared is just taking into account that there are two brackets that say the exact same thing. We'll learn in a later lesson what this means graphically, but you just need to recognize that these are the same thing. Furthermore, we can take these brackets and write them in any order. For instance, I could put this one first and then put the minus 3 and put the plus 2 at the end. These are the same thing. You're multiplying, and the order in which you multiply these brackets does not matter. Please give me a jingle if you need help with this. I would love to video chat with you guys. Miss you all.